This LED downlight looks safe, but installing it wrong could be scary. Hello, this is Rick Marino with Marino Custom Works. Today I want to share something that I came across after a recent home renovation. Something that could cause a serious problem if overlooked during installation of certain recessed LED downlights, can lights, or even the wafer style fixtures. Whether you're here in the Azores or anywhere else, this is something worth paying attention to. It's all about allowing for space and heat clearance above the light fixture. Even the LED lights generate heat. Up to 60% of the electricity they consume converts to heat, not light. Some quality brands manage this well, allowing for insulation with little or no clearance above the fixtures, but others, not so much. Most of these recessed lights are mass produced by wholesalers looking to minimize material costs as much as possible. Identical fixtures are shipped internationally with only changes to the packaging for multiple retailers. While this helps keep the cost down for the end user, the overall quality takes a backseat and leads to more hazards and failures. Even some of the wafer-thin LEDs are designed to fit to the width of the drywall, making them ideal for tight spaces in theory, but some still require a heat clearance above the fixture. So be sure to check the manufacturer's installation requirements, ideally before you buy. In a recent bathroom renovation, the electric wires have been pulled through a metal stud that ran directly through the center of the ceiling, exactly where the LED lights were to be installed. Now for a basic a drop down fixture requiring a mounting support in the living room, this would be fine. But this ceiling was prepped specifically for recessed LED lights. The same situation was discovered in the hallway and laundry room as well. So let me ask you, have you ever come across something like this in one of your installs or renovations? Maybe you found wires in an awkward spot or something hidden in the ceiling that changed your entire plan? If so, drop your experience in the comments. I'd love to hear how you handled it. In this scenario, you may think the wafer thin LED could fit in this space. But with the uncertainty of heat clearance and the fact that it is a metal stud conducive to both electricity and heat, I decided to move the mounting location for the standard LEDs that were already on hand. To make matters worse, one set of wires had been pulled through a sharp cutout in the metal stud without conduit. The razor sharp edge of the cutout can eventually grind through the wire insulation with just natural vibration of electric wire, let alone additional factors such as movement from frequent air drafts within the crawl space, the occasional island tremors, and even heavy Atlantic waves waves crashing along the coastline that are sometimes enough to rattle objects on shelves. So here's my solution. First I shut off the breaker. Fortunately, I guessed the right breaker on this unmarked box on the first try. Also make sure to test the wires for current after cutting the breaker. Next. I measured and marked the ceiling for two new holes away from the stud, making sure the two lights are still symmetrically spaced across the ceiling even if offset from the center. Then I used a 65mm hole saw for drilling the cutout and later fine tuned it with a couple of small notches with a drywall saw for two spring loaded clips to meet the 68mm specification in the installation manual. To avoid mishaps I drilled the hole in reverse and started slow. The drill bit is overkill for drywall anyway, so reverse actually works smoother. I saved the cutout piece for patching the old holes later. I guided the wires away from the metal stud to the new location using long needle nose pliers, making sure the wire length was sufficient. Thankfully they were coming from the switch side, so I had extra slack. Then I patched the old holes. I had one hole that is a perfect match for the cutout. I pre-drilled a pilot hole in the stud and used a drywall screw to pack it in place. The other hole was smaller, just wide enough for a conduit. So I shaped the second drywall cutout by hand with a saw, then I wedged it in place. Next I applied drywall mud to both of them with paint. I had to lightly sand by hand, apply more drywall compound with a final pass, sand again, and later paint. Before the final install I wired everything up. Sadly, this instruction manual showed the wiring diagram in reverse. These are class 2 lights, so they do not require a ground wire. Here in the Azores, the live is typically brown and neutral is blue. The house ground, if used, is almost always yellow with a green stripe. The actual fixtures I've come across here vary, but usually have the standard as black as live and white as neutral. I then notch the drywall slightly to accommodate the spring-loaded clips and test fit the LEDs without locking them in. Finally, after applying two light coats of flat white paint, I popped the fixtures in and made sure they were working properly. Now this bathroom has safe, hazard-free lighting, or as we say here in the Azores, loses. Thanks for watching. I'm honored to share helpful content regularly here on Marino Custom Works. If you learned something new today, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more practical DIY tips for projects here in the Azores or wherever you are. Until next time, have a great day.